Welcome to ensuring high quality IPTV services. In this presentation, we're going to develop some IPTV background and present some of the problems with delivering high quality IPTV. More and more service operators have discovered that they can generate revenue by offering IPTV services. IPTV makes it possible to offer subscribers concerts, premium movies through video on demand, and to integrate high definition and standard definition video. A question that comes up is, IPTV, what's so different than my old TV? Why can't I just connect a TV set and look at the signal to tell that the, the video is good or not? Uh, why can't I just monitor drop packets and percent utilization? And we'll take a look at the answer to these questions in just a bit. If we look at traditional TV versus IPTV, with traditional, we have all the channels are delivered to the subscriber all the time. So if you had 300 channels on your uh, cable TV, all of them are available uh, to that TV set. With IPTV, we're just going to deliver a small number of channels to each subscribers. And that's going to be the channels that they're interested in. So if he wants to leave a particular channel, that customer will have to do a request uh, to deactivate and leave and then switch to a new channel. They'll activate and then join that new channel. So uh, th this has to be done because of the tremendous amount of bandwidth that's being used to send the video. So we're going to make sure that each subscriber only gets the video, uh, I'm sorry, they only gets the channels that they're interested in viewing. With IPTV uh, delivery, we have a very efficient system, yet very fragile. And this fragility is what we're going to look at as we go through this presentation. Uh, it's very high speed, low cost, low latency, but we're going to pay a price for that as we'll see. Uh, and the fragility comes from the fact that we do have that low latency. We're going to run over the UDP protocol, which we'll talk about in just a moment. But we're also going to depend on all the IP network bandwidth, the IP core. We're going to depend on network components, and we're going to depend on configuration along the way uh, uh, the path of that network. If we take a look at customer objections, we know a customer doesn't like to have tiling or blocking on his set, uh, black or fro frozen screens, uh, loss of re resolution during fast motion, uh, with audio, you know, dropout, volume swells, or lip sync issues. Uh, the amount of time it takes to change a channel can be frustrating. If it takes more than a, uh, a half a second, uh, the customer is not going to be too happy about it. So. We want to monitor all these things uh, when we look at a, a, uh, an IPTV analyzer. If we look at the IPTV general delivery, we start with the video head in. We generate a video signal. We're going to encode it, possibly encrypt it, in order to uh, knock the bandwidth down. We're going to put it over the IP core network. And then finally, it's going to go across either DSL or fiber uh, loop off to the home where it goes through the fiber DSL modem uh, into the set-top box and is finally delivered to the TV. So that's the, uh, the pathway. I mentioned UDP just a minute ago, and we like to call it delivering on hope. We're going to send these IPTV packets over UDP, typically. Uh, and with, with UDP, it's uh, drop packets are preferable to delayed packets, which means we're just going to send it as fast as we can. If it doesn't get there, it's no problem. Just keep sending it. So a good IPTV analyzer needs to provide statistics for drop packets, and that's one of the first questions. But we're going to see that you have to do a whole lot more as well. We talked about compression. We're going to have to do some type of compression because we've got a lot of video bandwidth that's going to have to go across the IP core network, and we don't want to choke it. So if we take a compression method, we can see a, a vehicle uh, driving across uh, this parking lot and it moves forward through the parking lot. We can see that nothing else changed. We can compress this down to nothing more than the motion and the new image of that car in this position. We don't need to resend all this information continually because it was unchanged and that's the area around that car. And this is one of the ways that compression works. We're going to compress things that don't change uh, much like a, a PDF you know, can do or a zip file can do when you uh, compress a file. We're going to compress colors and movement. So a good IPTV analyzer needs to detect what type of compression you're using, be it MPEG-2, MPEG-4, uh, 264. Because if we increase that compression, we're going to decrease the bandwidth. 
and that's also going to decrease the quality. If we look at the mechanics behind that compression, we have to introduce something called I, P, and B frames, or in the case of high definition, we also have SI and SP frames. And the way these work is we start with an I frame, and we'll take Pac-Man here for an example. We have an I frame, which is a snapshot, uh, like you would take with a camera. And we can see what's uh, still shot. And then the P and the B frames in between are the predictor frames and the bidirectional frames until we finally feel that it's time to show another iframe again. So we can see if this iframe is sent, it's a lot of information, we can compress the next few frames down just to the changes. In this case, the predictor realizes that those dots are moving to the left. The bidirectional realizes they're still moving to the left and there's new ones coming in. And then finally, we get back to a new iframe. So we're only sending the iframe and we're sending this information of these dots here and everything is kind of grayed out here is not necessary. So this is kind of how the compression works. We'll now introduce the concept of group of pictures and all this is is we're going to take these iframes, P and B frames, and we're going to put them in a, in a sequence and call it a group of pictures or a GOP. So a good IPTV analyzer needs to identify the GOP, the type structure, the length, because this is going to define the time to recover from errors. And we'll take a look at that now. If we were to lose an iframe, our snapshot frame, we're going to lose everything in between until we get to the next iframe. If we lose a B frame, we're only going to lose the next B frame in this case. If we lose a P frame, we will lose the two B frames in between before we get to a new P frame to resynchronize ourselves to the, the video image. So a good IPTV analyzer needs to keep statistics for IP and B frames that are received versus those that are lost, discarded, or impaired. And now if we take a picture of uh, what this all means, here we have a single iframe that's lost, and we can see the, the hole in the data right here because we lost that entire group of pictures. Whereas if we lose a B frame, we can see like a motion issue, whereas this is kind of clear in this area, we see some motion issues here and here. So a good IPTV analyzer needs to detect excessive problems like blurring, tiling, and more importantly, report the degradation factors that contributed to the cause of that uh, degradation. Thank you. You won't want to miss part two of ensuring high quality IPTV services.